Hi, it's the nerd here. I've been playing around in my lab with doing some installs, some clean installs of Windows 11 on some PC hardware that does not support Windows 11. And there's a workaround you have to do, but let's go through this together and I'll show it to you. So what I've just done is pressed F8 on this ASUS motherboard to bring up a one-time boot menu. And I have the Windows 11 installation media on a memory stick, I used Rufus to put the Windows 11 ISO on the memory stick and make it bootable. And now I'm gonna boot from that and I'm gonna go through the clean install process of Windows 11 onto this computer. Now this computer does not support TPM, so I am breaking the compatibility rules of Windows 11, but there is a well-known workaround on the internet that you can find just about anywhere if you just do a search of install Windows 11 without TPM, and that will let you install. Now I'm booting into the Windows 11 installation process here. The icon is just slightly different. It looks very, very similar to Windows 10. I'll hit next and say install now, and it's starting up, and you're gonna see the incompatibility I have here in just a minute, it's going to be devastating. Life is going to be horrible. Now, since this isn't really an installation I care about, I'm just going to say I do not have a product key. You can always add that later. And I'm going to install Windows 11 Education. Or, you know, you could do, uh, you could do Enterprise. But I'm going to do this because this allows me to create a local domain account instead of a Microsoft account and I'm gonna hit next and it's going to check for compatibility. So you see right now it says this PC doesn't meet the minimum system requirements to install this version of Windows. For more information, blah, 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 blah. So the workaround I wanna do here is I have to edit the registry that is running on this installation media. Now I can do that by holding down Shift F10, bringing up a command prompt, and saying reg edit if I can type it reg edit there we are now the workaround is you go to H key local machine system setup now once we're in setup we need to create a new key and this new key is going to be called lab config now I'm in that key I've got to create some registry entries to make the Windows install not do the checks to see if we're hardware compliant to install Windows 11 so I'm gonna say new D word and the first one I have to add is bypass TPM check and let me just uh, select all that and say control C for copy to save myself a little bit of typing. New D word 32 bit value, they're all 32 bit values. And this one is bypass RAM check. And then the third one, also a D word 32, is uh, bypass secure boot check. Now I've created these three values. I have to double click on each one and set the value to one. So I, I've added, once again, I've gone into H key, local machine, system, setup, created a key called lab config. In that I put three reg D word 32 bits called bypass RAM check, bypass secure boot check and bypass TPM check. And if you set those all to one, that's what we need to do. Now I can close out the registry editor and close out my secret command prompt. And if I come here and hit the back button and then hit next, it's gonna let me go through with the install. So you see now it's to the I accept phase and I do want to accept. After carefully reading all this material to make sure that you know, I'm not giving away the rights to my bank account when I agree to this agreement, which Microsoft's probably not doing that to me. Let's hit next. And I'm going to do a custom 
install. So there's already an operating system on this computer, so I'm going to delete every one of these partitions. They're all gonna go away, and all that really important data is going to go away with it. Actually, there's nothing on this computer. Now I have an unallocated drive, and I'm gonna hit Next, and it's going to go through the Windows 11 install process. So what it's doing now is creating multiple partitions on the hard drive, a very small boot partition, it's creating about a 500 megabyte recovery partition, and then the rest of the hard drive is disk drive C, and it's going to be copying the installation files onto that hard drive, and running the rest of the install from that new partition. So I will do a time lapse until we get to something interesting. All right, it's finished doing the initial install and it's going to reboot the computer. I'll save a few seconds by hitting restart now. Look at that, I saved three seconds in the install. If I hadn't been yapping to you, I could have saved 10 seconds during this install period. Tisk, tisk. And I'll time lapse until something interesting happens again. So one of the things you'll notice, or I noticed, is that the Windows 11 installation does at least one more reboot than the Windows 10 installation. But this looks fairly familiar. Let's see, let's pick my country as the United States. And US keyboard, skip an additional keyboard. I don't have a second keyboard. This is all pretty much like the Windows 10 install with new graphics and a new color scheme. It's doing some updates now, and if nothing really happens here, I'll do another time lapse till we get to something. You know, either that, or I could try to convince you to buy into a timeshare in Florida. Maybe not. Well, I'm running at a higher resolution now. That's a good sign. Now it wants me to name my machine. Uh, this is not creating a username. This is giving my device a name. And I'm, I'm going to call it uh, Bubba PC. Bubba's always been one of my favorite names for this sort of stuff. So Bubba PC seems appropriate. And uh, can't put a space in the computer name or anything. There are no special characters. Now I'll hit Next. And I think the next thing it's going to do here is, is it going to reboot again? Yes, it's rebooting again. And then the installation will continue. All right, we're getting further. I think this is the part where it's, gonna, it's going to encourage me highly to create a Microsoft account. And for your home users, that's pretty much what you have to do. There, there is a workaround you can do to create just a local account. But since I installed education, or if you do enterprise, I can go to sign in options and say, join a domain instead. And since this computer is not joined to a domain, I would just be creating a local user. So I'll just create a local user, of course, sticking to the name Bubba, because this is Bubba's PC, of course. And since this is a lab computer where I teach, it's very inconvenient if we put passwords in the PC hardware lab, because the next group of students that comes along is locked out of the machine because they don't know the password. So not a good security practice, but I will leave this password blank. 
I can pick all my security settings here. I can say if I want a tailored experience or advertising ID and all that stuff. For right now, I'm just going to say accept and continue on. And it's checking for updates and creating my user account. Now, this seems very familiar if you've installed Windows 10. Except we kind of get this pleasing blue background behind the, this might take a few minutes. Please don't turn your computer off. We're almost there. Such a friendly font. And here we are to the opening screen of Windows 10. So you can see I'm logged in as Bubba. I could click here. I can click at my power options for sleep, shut down, restart. And you notice that the start button is now centered versus being on the left hand side. And you can change that if you right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings. And if you hunt through all these different uh, features, you can tell it you want to put uh, the taskbar on the left. Let's see if I can find it. Anyway, I know you can do it. Now, once Windows is installed, the things we want to make sure are, are we online? So if I come down here and look at my notification area, it says network, internet access, so I'm online. How is my device manager and have updates been run? So I'm online, so I can go to my start menu and go to settings. Windows Update, we've got a different look to the Settings control panel, and I can say, look and see what updates are available. And by the way, Advanced Options is where you find your optional updates, and this is where I might find uh, driver updates. It says there's 70 driver updates. Now let's go back though, and let's, let's start updates now. Let's get all the way back to Windows Update at the top level and say download now and get that going. And then let's take a look at my device manager. I'll hit the search button here and just type in device. And I want device manager. And you can see there are a lot of device drivers missing that have to do with the chipset. Now these will, since I am online and I'm running Windows Update, these will eventually get installed. Let's, let's arrange our windows a little bit better. This is one thing I really do like about Windows 11. If you put your mouse over the restore, you can pick how you want your windows laid out. So I'm gonna put Windows Update over here and put Device Manager right here and then I'm still leaving part of my desktop. Now, if I go into Advanced Options again and go to Optional Updates, of course I am going to want to get the cumulative update for Windows 11, but if I go into Device Drivers, this is pretty much all the stuff I'm missing right here. Now, what I have found is Windows will eventually install these drivers without me doing anything. Windows 11 will eventually install these drivers without me doing anything because there is no device driver. So I don't have to go in here and check all these off. And once I get them all checked off, come down to the bottom and say download and install because it will eventually do them through a series of updates. So let's get the cumulative update installed now. And this is just a normal process of installing Windows. You're going to go through, get all your updates, get all your device, man uh, all your device drivers in place so you don't have any exclamation points, any yellow warning triangles anywhere. And that's just an ongoing process. 
cumulative update is a whole bunch of updates poured into one update. It's a big update. It's going to take a while. Guess what? I'll do another time lapse till we get through this. So now it's downloaded the cumulative update. Now it's installing it. It has the cumulative update installed, so guess what? No Windows install is complete without at least one more restart. So once again, I want to check my Windows update situation and I want to check device manager see if I've got all my drivers installed and I do not let's use this handy dandy get everything arranged again and if I check for updates here this is different from Windows 10 that if you had missing device drivers, they would show up in your regular check for updates. Now, I'm getting a .NET Framework cumulative update, and of course my antivirus has an update as well. So you got to install updates and then you have to install updates to the updates or what I like to do is what I like to say is keep installing your updates until there ain't no mo. Now, it still hasn't taken care of my missing device drivers. We could do this a couple ways. Not the way I would recommend is going to each one and saying update driver, search automatically for driver. Okay? that can be very annoying to go through all of those. I am going to go to advanced options here. Go to optional updates and let's see if we can get these updates kick-started. Now the thing I don't want to have to do and I have not found a hotkey for select all. But I do need to get all these drivers installed. See if I click too fast, it doesn't get all my other clicks. Now that's kind of annoying. When I get a chance here, I'm going to do a web search and see if there's a way to select all these optional updates. If you know, please leave it in the comments. We're getting there. Yes. I think I can. I've got everything selected. Let's say download and install. Looks like it's time for another time lapse. I just got a video driver installed. That's why my screen went blank and came back. So almost all my system devices are getting taken care of now. 
in Device Manager, I'm down to two devices that have not been installed. Now I'm down to one. And from playing around here, I know that Windows has this driver. It's just a matter of when it's going to decide to install it. And it wants a restart. And it cannot install this last one until it restarts because it says pending restart. So what is this, my fifth or sixth restart on Windows 11? As much as I like ASUS motherboards, I am getting just a bit tired of looking at the ASUS Pyron self-test screen. But I'm logged back in as Bubba again. So once again, let's check my settings. And let's check Windows Update. It says I'm up to date as of 308. We're going to check updates one more time because we need to check updates until there ain't no mo. And while that's going on, let's get Device Manager up. And I still have one unknown device. Well, that is slightly annoying. So let's go check under Advanced Options, Optional Updates. There is one driver update that's probably this unknown device. Let's download and install. And look at that. I now have a perfectly clean device manager. My computer's up to date. I've got an antivirus. Everything's ready to go. And I have successfully installed Windows 11 on a computer that does not support Windows 11. You can see a few other differences here in uh, Windows 11. Uh, the ribbon is toned down on File Explorer. We have a lot less buttons here. Uh, everything has a more flat aesthetic. Let's see if I right click on this PC and go to Properties. Yep, I can still get to my system settings. Let's see what we've got here. You can see it's an older machine. It's got an i5-5820K, not an i5, an i7. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you can see we're running a 64-bit version of Windows, and the touchscreen supports 10-point touch. We're running Windows 11 Education, 21H2. It tells me when it's installed. I installed it today. Gives me the build number. And I have not activated this one, so I would have to say product key and activation and put in my uh, product key. I could turn on BitLocker if I wanted. All the stuff's there that we're used to seeing in Windows 10. And I think that is going to finish up this video on installing Windows 11. So if you enjoyed this video, well, you know what content creators like you to do. And I would appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And everybody, take care. Let's shut this thing down.